Hey Wizard, so in this video, I'm going to talk about this new upgrade on forking the mainnet so that we can test flash loans without spending any money on gas fees. So big special thanks to Eric. Uh, so one of the viewers on the original video said, Sean, stop telling people don't sign up for this. You're going to lose your money. What would be more impressive is if we could develop in a way to fork the mainnet to test the flash loans. And I thought that was a very, very helpful comment. And it really stuck with me because I didn't know how to do that in the browser. Like I know how to do it with hard hat. I know how to do it. We teach it in the course, right? On trading execution, um, on Udemy, et cetera, with, with flash loans. So that course there, you actually use hard hat and you do this. But what about the people who don't want to learn an entire course on how to program with Solidity and smart contracts, et cetera, right? What about if you just want to do this really quickly as well without having to go and plug it into some program? And that's been very challenging, but we figured out a way to do it. And that's what I'm going to show you how to use here in this video. Now, let's get into it. But just before I do that, big shout out to Matt, who's getting married, one of our wizards. Congratulations, brother. Awesome. And also to Peng. Peng. Thank you so much for the helpful comments and the email exchanges here on this tool. And there's a lot of you guys as well who have sent me lists of improvements uh, here. So you know who you are. I've put a lot of those improvements in already. So you'll see a lot of those, you know, as we go through this. But I really want to make this focus mainly on testing uh, the forked mainnet. But you'll see a lot of the changes in it. So let's actually uh, just go and close this ticket that I've got open here. And I'm going to go ahead and just disconnect from my MetaMask over here. So I'm going to disconnect from that account. I'm going to refresh the page. And here I'm going to act as though I've just visited this page, right? So here I'm going to connect to MetaMask. I'm going to hit next, I'm going to sign in. And that's what you would go through, right? If you're using this tool. Now, both of these icons should be green, i.e. your MetaMask should be connected to the Binance Smart Chain, because right now, this tool only works for the Binance Smart Chain. We're not doing it for Ethereum. We're not doing it for Polygon right now, just the Binance Smart Chain. And we have a number of searches that are happening across PancakeSwap and ApeSwap. And these are, you know, just straightforward cross exchange arbitrage. So buy a coin here, trade it over here with a flash loan, make some coin or make some BUSD or make some WBNB or whatever. And the other one is triangular arbitrage. So this is looking at a three way arbitrage and it looks at multiple uh, exchanges. Most of them you can see are just pancake swap. Some are just ape swap and some you can see are a combination in between ape swap and pancake swap. Nonetheless, this tool will handle all of that trading for you. And I do want to point out before actually we go into the main net, there are two camps of people when it comes to this flash gap tool. The first camp are, I hate this. I wish I never signed up for it. Give me my money back. That's camp number one. And that's equally, that's absolutely fine. There's another camp of people. And I would say the split is really 50, 50 or 30, 70. There's another camp of people who go, we absolutely love this, or I absolutely love this. I get a lot of value from it. Um, you know, I want to correct you. I have made money here from it, etc. So I've had both email exchanges repetitively. I've had both email exchanges. So if you're not a big fan of this tool, that's absolutely fine. You know, there's other tools here that we use. There's other education here we do on the channel. This is not all about this one tool. You don't have to use the coins that are found on this platform. You can paste in your own tokens or your own arbitrage opportunities, test them and execute them from the platform, which is what I think is really cool. And again, thanks to Eric. So what I'm going to do here is pick this one because this seems to find the most arbitrage opportunities from what I can see and from my testing. And you can see here, there's a number of ARBs popping up. Here's one against BI, uh, BIN, WBNB. So this is showing some wacky percentage, too good to be true. Let's go and test it. So here I've done the calculation test. My gas fees are going to be about 79 cents, 80 cents on this type of transaction. Now I want to go and actually see, you know, how much depth is there. So what I'll do is I'm going to leave this on live and I'm going to go and hit check over here. Right. So when I go and hit check, it says, yep, there's actually a six dollar arbitrage opportunity here happening right now. So this gets very exciting. But then what you do is you trade it and you find you just lost your gas fees. So what you want to do then is switch this. And here's where the main upgrade is switch it from live 
to test. And you can see here it now says test blockchain and it'll let you know it's connected successfully when it says mainnet connection test. I'm going to explain how this is working after I've shown it to you. Now watch what happens when I go down here and hit trade. When I hit trade, it should say transaction fail or transaction succeeded, transaction failed. So I don't have to now go and investigate on PancakeSwap, etc. Will this transaction succeed? I don't have to use a lot of bespoke third party tools to test it. This has already told me arbing this is a waste of time and I haven't had to spend any money to figure that out, which is really good, right? I'm really excited about that. If I click on this transaction hash here, it'll check it again for me. So sometimes it checks it, but then it's still going through and then you click it again and you see, oh, actually it, it did work. Um, that's happened to me once, which is why I put this functionality in here. So that is how you can fork the mainnet. Now let's test it with $100. So what I'm going to do here is test it with $100. And you can see that's still saying there's a huge arbitrage opportunity, right? But we know this one is bogus. Let's go and test another one. So I'm going to do this one against skill. So actually skill was a real one. <laughs> it was a real one because I saw it when I was developing and I literally saw as I was developing and this happens sometimes. I literally saw the balance going down. So somebody was arbing this, whether it was someone from Crypto Wizards or someone else entirely, I have no idea, uh, which is quite interesting. So here I'm going to go and check this. It says no arbitrage found. All right, so it's, it's gone. It's no longer an arbitrage opportunity, but for very small amounts, you'll get some arbitrage right here, here for $1 worth. Now, let me explain here what this is doing, this amount input, excess potential, etc. And this is special thanks to Peng as well. And Peng, I hope I'm answering your, your questions here sufficiently. So when developing this, when doing ARBs, the thing I got really frustrated with is working out, is this worth ARBing or not in terms of the US dollar equivalent, right? How, how good an opportunity is this really? And so what I wanted to be able to do was put in the transaction size in respect to roughly the size of US dollars or BUSD. So what the tool's doing is it's taking that amount. So this is $1 and it's converting that into whatever currency it's, it's now trading based on this pair, right? So here I've got uh, WBNB. So it's getting 0 0.0034 WBNB. And that's what it's putting in. And then it's trading WBNB for skill. And this is the amount uh, out so the excess potential of WBNB in this example. So I'm starting with WBNB. I'm trading it for skill. It's one dollar's worth of WBNB. So this amount of WBNB going in, trading it for skill, trading skill back for WBNB on the Ape Swap. So it's starting at Pancake Swap, going to Ape Swap, trading it back for WBNB, and it's doing that all with a flash loan. And so, you know, if I wanted to go and trade this now live, I, I, I wouldn't bother because it's not making enough to cover gas fees. You need this to make at least a dollar, right? That's really what you want this to say, to cover gas fees. Um, so I could just go and click this, right? And it's going to go to MetaMask, etc. I don't have enough funds here in this test account anymore, but that's fine. You've seen this in previous videos. You've seen me go and do that. So that's how you would do it. But if you want to check it on the... Uh, on the blockchain, on the test blockchain, on the forked mainnet without using gas fees, you switch this to test and then just go and hit trade. And so that is then going to run through um, and actually go and trade this just like I showed you before and tell you whether or not it thinks it's real. And here you can see this transaction has failed. So every now and then you will find one that says TX success. If you see that, the chances are it's not guaranteed. Of course, it's not guaranteed, right? But the chances are it will work. Those, that's, how this is, that's how this is useful. The other thing is when you go and trade a successful one or when you go and trade this with the mainnet, um, I wish I had funds actually now so I could show you, but this link you used to have to copy and paste into BSC scan. When you then click this link and you've tested it live, it'll just take you straight to BSC scan with that, you know, with that uh, item there. So one of the other things that I just want to show you very quickly is just looking at, uh, let me pick a different one, actually, let's go and pick, I don't know, this one over here, is this USD equivalent. 
So a lot of folk had written in to say, Sean, there's something funky going on with this. And I couldn't work it out. And then I finally worked out what was happening. On occasion, this was giving a bogus number. And I'm sorry for that. Um, but it was giving a bogus number. And the reason is, was to do with the amount of decimals that a ERC20 based token had. And I'm not going to go into it. Those of you who, you know, do the programming side, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This was basically assuming the wrong number of decimals. It was assuming the same amount of decimals that, um, that BUSD had. And so if that token didn't have that number of decimals in it, uh, most of them do, but a lot of them don't, um, then it would give you a funky number. And so this is now using a better exchange rate. So what this is doing is it's not saying you will get US dollars, right? It's saying you'll get WBNB on this specific trade. Um, but this is saying this is how much that WBNB in excess, this is your profit over here, yeah? This is how much your profit is in dollar terms so that you can see very quickly, is this worth my time, yes or no? And so that's the whole idea, you know, behind what this is all doing over here. That's basically what we're trying to do over here. So that's it. Very, very straightforward. Uh, for those of you who have, you know, been using the tool, you'll be well versed in this. And it works for triangular arbitrage as well, right? So you can go and figure out, is there an opportunity? Here's one between Cardano, it looks like, etc. Um, so if we actually go in, let me just check the gas fees here. So the gas fees for triangular arbitrage are more because there's more transactions involved in a smart contract for triangular arbitrage. So if I go and actually bring this up now, I want to I want to show you something actually. See this here where it says test blockchain. Let's actually talk about how this is working. So if you if you look up here at the clock, you'll see this is now saying 1134. Now watch this orange bar. Because in a moment you're going to see it switch. It's going to change color. I want to explain to you why that is. And I want to explain to you what's actually going on um, and, and why that's occurring. So here you go. So it says updating forked blockchain. And now it's going to switch back to orange again. Any minute now. There you go. So when that goes black, it means don't do anything. Because we are creating a new forked blockchain. That's what we're doing. And it's not ideal. But I don't want to go setting up loads of blockchains to overlap that until I see this working properly in the field, right? So this is R&D, this is research and development, right? This could all be used today and not work tomorrow um, because of the now a mass of people using it. I have no idea, but that's what's going on. So what's happening is it's very difficult to fork the mainnet in the browser. Not only that, but a lot of people are using different computers, et cetera, et cetera. So some people have signed up and, you know, they're like, oh, this thing hasn't worked or whatever. And I found out, OK, I need to change some JavaScript because, you know, and then I'll be like, just use Chrome. You know, there's so many things that can go wrong. So what I'm doing is I've created a fork of the mainnet on a separate machine out in the cloud. And then what this is doing is it's calling out to that mainnet. So it's not creating a mainnet every time you go to test. So for example, if I go from live to test, it's not creating a new mainnet. It's using the same mainnet, mainnet that was created by this other cloud. But then you would say, well, that doesn't make sense because how do you know that arbitrage opportunity is still live? Because, you know, when did you take that snapshot of the blockchain? And the way I've worked around that is just to create a mainnet every five minutes. So to me, that's a reasonable time frame for testing transactions. It seems to have worked absolutely perfectly through all the testing I've been doing. It works. But what that means is you have to shut that mainnet down and reboot it again. And so when this is going from test blockchain, it's going from this to that dark uh, barrier that you had seen before, that's what is happening. It's taking 10 seconds to go and boot down and boot up. And that's telling you, don't bother testing. Well, this is a black bar. Wait for it to be orange. That's what it's telling you. Now, in the future, if this if this all goes well, I'm going to create a lot more forked mainnets so that you have, you know, very, very live, a very live mainnet, uh, etc. I know that there are technologies coming where you'll be able to fork mainnets in the browser a lot more easily. There's a lot of things there that will just replace this. Like this tool 
and what it's written in and how it's written and it works will not be the same in six months. It'll be completely different. It'll still be the same to the people using it, but how it's working will be completely different because this tech is evolving pretty much all the time. So just to show you, uh, as I was down here, you can see here, you can also check this on, you know, on the um, test mainnet here. But if I go to live and I hit this again, you'll see I get the same result. <laughs> so you can see it's using, it's using the same blockchain, right? It's, it's, it's as close as damn it. And so if I switch this back to test again, wait for that to hit test and hit trade, then what you should see here is you should see that this is going to, oh, it's succeeded. Fantastic. So <laughs> annoyingly, uh, I actually don't have any funds in my MetaMask, so this will probably be gone. Um, but this is great. I can check it again. And there you go. Transaction success. So this is probably a good one to try to go and actually trade. Let's go and just see the depth. Okay, it's not because it's only four cents. So <laughs> So you're only going to make four cents and it's going to cost you more in gas fees. So sorry, it's actually not a good one to trade. But if I go and hit $100, let's go and check that. No arbitrage for $100 worth. So again, probably not a good one. Now, just uh, to add on one of the comments I made earlier, if you find your own tokens and you want to test them, you can paste them in here. You can paste in any uh, factory or router addresses you want. So remember, as I showed you before, just Google, you know, factory address ApeSwap or, you know, uh, router address PancakeSwap or just copy them and save them in a text file, you know, from this website, because these are the addresses. Any, any contract on Binance Smart Chain that uses a fork of Uniswap V2 will work on this. Doesn't have to be PancakeSwap and ApeSwap. So even though these titles here won't change, you can paste in any coins you want and then go and check them. So when you check them, check them on live. There's no point in checking them on test. Switch it to live when you're checking. When you want to trade it for peace of mind, then you go to test. So you can see here it's doing its update, which is why it didn't connect. Updating for blockchain. There you go. So that's a perfect example of what I was describing earlier. So this is all working out quite nicely, actually. So then you can go that you can, you know, hit trade and it should fail the transaction, uh, transaction failed. And if I do it for say, you know, $10 worth, let's see if we still get that roughly four cents that we calculated before transaction success. All right, excellent. So in terms of the next uh, things that I'm going to be working on for the platform, I am going to be doing more work on Zscore. This is my favorite tool. Um, you know, uh, one of the wizards on the prior video related to Zscore and the upgrades we made here because um, now you can do daily, hourly and five minute time frames, etc. I mentioned auto trade and tons of people said, yep, we want to do that. One of the wizards said, you know, Sean, be very careful and get insurance, etc. So I've actually had to go uh, seeking legal advice. Um, I met uh, the other day uh, an initial contact with a very, very good lawyer, very nice guy, actually, uh, who's helping me figure out how to make it so that we can actually execute statistical arbitrage from the platform legally because there's a lot of risk right and there's a lot of risk no matter what way you look at it there's a lot of risk um, that you bring on when you do that but one of the things that i want to develop in the meantime where there is no risk is i want to develop a test net functionality for automating trading so that people can forward test like we learned to do in the um, uh, in the building bot course the statistical arbitrage building bot course I want to enable people who don't know programming to be able to do that. And I have an idea for how to do that. And I want to add that here into the tool. So that's something I'm going to be working on next. I'm way behind on Discord. I'm about two weeks behind on Discord. Um, I did warn you this would happen. Um, so I do apologize for anyone who's tried reaching out to me there on Discord. I will jump back in probably as soon as I can next week and just hammer through and get to any questions. And also on Udemy, um, I've got about a week and a half worth of questions, a uh, week and a half's worth of questions there to catch up on. I haven't been able to put this down. Forking the main net was a big deal to me. I really wanted to get it in, but I will get to your questions for those of you who are wondering there as well. Hope you found this video useful. Until the next one, take care. Talk soon.